but you know there's a limit but but not where they come in and oh, actually when I go out with people now if they, if, if they come looking somebody did this a few days ago I said if your friend comes don't bring somebody looking all like he's just left the office I said oh well don't bring him and he did he took no notice I said how can you do this and it was so embarrassing <laughs> well I said I'll just get a bad name I said you know it's nice to look like you bring interesting people to play to a place Listen, it doesn't make them nicer people. I'm not that stupid. It's like, oh, you've become a nice person now because you're looking alternative. But I know it's just not that people in there who generally don't want to see it, see it looking corporate. Corporate is the cursed word. Remember that word. Because, you know, people are, are really don't want to be regimented. They don't want to be corporate. So we're talking about the present now. I'd rather, much rather this went towards the present, how things are going, right. and whatever. So and in the present, there's a bit of a difficult conversation about this. Cause, why? Because trying to keep a space, and you'll be able to talk about this better than me, trying to keep a space like safe for everyone there, with like, good atmosphere, is very difficult because you also don't want to be exclusive. So how do you deal with that? Honestly, I, I've struggled with it. I've struggled with it for very, very long time. What clubs or working in a bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> it's all policies. Um, and because you know, I don't want to, I don't want to turn someone away. You know, who's just moved to London and hasn't like invested in a nice wardrobe yet. Yeah, anyway. I want them to come in, look around, get inspiration, then go. You know, get into yeah. the stuff. Yeah. And, well, like, I agree, we need to protect the atmosphere. You know, we don't want all these people to then come in and also just like start treating us like zoo animals. You know, a lot of them are like tourists to our culture, to queer culture. We come in and they just go all pals, you know? And it's just like, you know, it's just feel uncomfortable because we're there to have a good time and feel liberated. Um, but I just remember like this time, I was running a trans night in East London, and this person came who I was presenting as a man in a suit, um, like as a banker. And like, they're like door people, just like, no chance, no chance, no chance. And they were like, please, please, please. So I came up to them, I was like, what's going on? And he was like, really nervous. And I was like, oh. I was like oh, whatever. Just let him in. He went straight into the cubicle, where his rock's at, got changed into a full dress, pulled on some pumps, put some lipping on there quick and working out. Came back to him, hi, my name's Sandra. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that person was married and had children and was a banker and no one knew that actually uh, they were cross-dressing and exploring their trans identity. I don't know where the person is now, they may be a full-blown trans woman, maybe they found the courage to leave the wife. Maybe they're still cross-dressing on the weekend, who knows? But then from that moment I was like, oh fuck, we just don't even know. You know, we, we, we can't judge. But it's one I'm learning a lot from you, Philip, about our policy. Saying that, I mean, with a different way, but heaven obviously doesn't count as Soho because it's, well, the wrong, you know, that, that it, end, it kind of does. Doesn't it? Well, I, I, it sort of does, really. Unfortunately, it's, officially, it's not so, but it's, it feels like it's part of it. But you know, in the 80s, I, I couldn't dis a lot of the time I couldn't decide what to wear. I was thinking about outfits. And do you know, every time I went, I used to start with a suitcase and I'd get changed all night long into different outfits. Not just once, about three times, four times. Terrible. That is Love tragic, though. Change. I'm sorry. I mean, to get. Now, I'm, I'm sorry, talk about superficial world, but I did get pleasure out of it. <laughs> well, anyway, I don't do that anymore, obviously, I've grown up now. I'm normal! <laughs> Talking of the present, is there somewhere in Soho, yes. and we'll open this up, that you think is like, because yes. we're, we're all aware that Soho is changing in certain ways. And what for the worst, you We're think? sitting here in Soho House, you know, things are changing. Yes. Um, is there a place in Soho that you still think is like really special and it doesn't have to be a club, it can be anywhere? That's an interesting Does point. anyone else want to go? You're very welcome to. Uh, what, so where they think is interesting? It would be depressing if no one says it. Did you love that place, John? I fucking loved it. Play it shop. was great. Which one? No, but it wasn't about a clothes shop. A it was a, a, a thing that was called a shop, but it wasn't a shop, it was a club. It was in. A, between these two Soho houses here, you know, I've got Old Compton Street, but actually yeah, the others are going towards Wardour Street. A few doors on, it's called Never Fade, and they've just shut it down. It's been there for about a couple, two or three years. It was fucking amazing. You walked in, there was all bands playing, everyone was sitting on the floor. It was fucking wonderful. I've never seen a shop like that in my life. It was such a scream. Yeah, but the trouble is obviously people stole stuff in there, you know what I mean? Because they're, they're just walking out, but yeah, well, I'm not condoning that, but obviously that fucks up the shop as well. But yeah, I mean, it was, listen, it was over till 
two in the morning. Can you hear this? Like two in the morning. What club at the shop is open till then? I didn't see them selling very much. And people were painting all the clothes in there. It was amazing, but it wasn't. I'd wear any things. I think I've never even looked at the clothes. I couldn't care less. Do you want to know about my own clothes, thanks? So where's that place still open? Is that place still open? No, but I'll tell you a place that is really. When I walk people, I take them to the Soho House, to the Groucho, I say, actually, why don't you look at this place? And I don't know if everybody in here knows it, but I tell you, for decor wise, it's probably the best decor in the West End. It's as big as this room. And do you know what the place is called? The Friendly Society. All right, come on, put hands up for anyone who's been there. Oh, it is. Oh. Sarah, you have? fucking great. It's about a three minute walk from a minute, four minute walk. It's fantastic. We should take that later. They've got a downstairs room and they've got all original 50s wallpaper, 60s wallpaper. They've made original that, that baby sham wallpaper and then they've had Barbie dolls all over the city, thousands of them. And they, they've got like lesbian bar in big letters. I don't know. No, but it's just like it's a piss takey way or something. But it just looks but, but this tiny space, I think they've done an amazing job there. And it's sort of a gay bar, but sort of not. But anyone who I've taken a straight, you don't think about it as being a, a gay place. It's not really. It's just this freak show, and that's wonderful. <laughs> that's the best decor of, of so so. Uh, forget so of the West End, I'd say. And all it is is a lot of retro objects. Do you know what I mean? I think oh. really, if we're talking about future, you really don't go wrong with buying retro. This makes me since you said retro. Does this count? This you're going to say this doesn't count as so, solo, but if it does, my favourite place is retro. Is, is oh, is that the one? Love it. That has anyone been to is retro that on bar? The, little Portland Street. Is that the it's one? amazing. It's on. You go along. What's it called? Chat Charing Cross Road. Right. It's not called. Yeah, the Strand. The Strand. And it's just down by the embankment, just before Charing Cross Station, down a little side street, and it's called Retro Bar. It's got like colourful lights, and it's got like, all the walls are covered in pictures of icons like Vine or Cher or Patti Smith or, you know, Blonde and Salon. All these, everyone. Is it by Charing Cross Road? There's a place I went to, like an alleyway. There's anyway. a jukebox. Princess Julia does a pop quiz there once a week. Princess Julia does a pop quiz there. It's really good, and it's quite cheap high. Retro bar, oh, Mix drunk. mixture of oh, people. Weird one. I've gone to so all my life. I've never drunk, never taken drugs, don't smoke, yeah. never smoked. It's funny, and yet I've mixed with all these. But the thing is, you know, you said where I like being. Up till obviously before the lockdown, I'd always go and sit with the homeless people and just sit and dance and have a chat. It's funny. I went to Milan years several years ago, and we went for the Versace show. And all I ended up doing was sitting in Milan railway station they took, with all the junkies, and I felt at home. And yet I don't take drugs, but I feel at home with misfits. I do. I mean, it's not that I think I should feel at home with misfits. I do feel at home with misfits. Yeah, well, you know what I mean? And so it is what it is, but, but you know, there's, there's all sorts of misfits lurking around everywhere, really. That's what you say. Is anyone, does anyone else want to share a favourite place in Soho that we should check? Because I do think like some of us are sort of abandoning Soho conceptually. I say that as a kind of not m mostly just as a queer person. I don't, wouldn't ever really go out here anymore, and I used to go out all the time to like Madame Jojo's and Escape and Soho mm. Arts Club, and? JY. Ten years ago, we actually got barred from quite a lot of them. <laughs> so that straight. What were you barred for, honestly? Oh. Is that what's really boring? Why is it really boring? Which is falling asleep in Madame Jojo's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the other one I was with some idiot. Some of the arts club, they were, burn they were burning, some of the idiot I was with was burning the books from the bookshelf in. So. And then I got banned from GAY late for a long time because I stood in the queue and I was so drunk. And then when I got to the front, they wouldn't let me in. And I was like, is that because I look straight? And then basically demanded to see the manager. I don't really, but <laughs> decided to speak to the manager. And it didn't go very well, so then I got barred from there. For, and they remembered for a long time. Like a weird thing. Oh, they do. You go back and they were like, not you, know. Oh, they're so <laughs> It took about tight. six years. Um, but, but anyway, I don't really go out in Soho anymore. I go out in East London, you know, where you, where you create things. But I just wondered, does anyone else have any like recommendations or is there anything good? Well, I, I, 
don't say Trisha, it's fine again. Because yeah. it's been here for seven Can you seven just go in though, or do you have to like... Yeah, you can just go in, but it's, it's just like this door, you won't even know it's there, like a friend, a friend, it's always like a friend of a friend. But it's been here for 78 years, and it's run by an 80 year old skull swimmer. Uh, so she's like, I know, I mean, oh, no. I, I love her. I, I love her. It feels like, like it's you. <laughs> every, every time I go to Trisha's bar, I just meet all these, just like, just these like really authentic people, you know, who have been a bit around the park, you know, as we talked to them about, like, I used to be a diamond thief. <laughs> it's just like, so, I'm like, that's what to be a diamond thief on the way out. Yeah, can I just say something which has to be mentioned, being as this whole thing's about Soho, there's one overriding thing, this isn't a slight thing, but all the things you talk about are why Soho could get worse and this, that and the other, there's one thing that overrides the whole lot and it's not changing, and what, what do you think is the death of Soho? Shall I tell you? Go on, can anyone guess what the word is? It's actually two words, of course. What's the corporate? No, it's called property prices. As property prices go up, people, you know, you're not going to have some seedy little thing there because it's too expensive. And so they're trying to keep up a profile like, look, this is our version of Amsterdam, you know, and our whatever, our red light area. But it's so expensive. And that's, um, so that's why it's moved east because east is cheaper. And it's also distressed, and distressed is fashionable. Uh, whatever. Take me, for instance. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a wreck. But the point is, so, it, it, you know, whatever you say about anything, like saying, oh, there should be this there, there should be that there, it becomes so expensive that people can't afford to yeah, pay watch them close one after the That's other. That's right. Play, like, county bar close, That's right. Close. They're not money-making enough to pay yeah. for the rent. It's all too expensive. Well, right? still look that close, does Madam Jojo's Madam Jojo's is, was meant to be the launch and then the pandemic hit. Mm. But um, Lionel Hagraya, who owns Flow Fabrics and Dolster, yes. um, was apparently going to be the creative director and do the relaunch of Madam Jojo's. No, 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 no. I'm friendly with the bloke who owns the box, right? Richard Kimmel, there's two of them that own it. And Richard, you know the box, everyone know the box in here? Yeah. 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 Whatever. Seems well, and and you, you, you're supposed to go yeah, the pine one that you should be in, Philip. <laughs> but no, not that box. Oh, the one that should be six foot underground. But anyway, uh, he, they bought that whole bit. They bought the Madam Jojo's the escape, that whole thing. Oh, and so I think there's an underground tunnel that would join it together. But I think maybe for special occasions, but it, it's now all been oh. taken over by them. So. What they do, An they do. Underground tunnel for special occasions. Can I do this? <laughs> something that, <laughs> something that, that, you know, like, like we're almost sitting here in post lockdown times. We're not, right? And the difference in the, I mean, Theo's heard all this before. Sorry, Theo, but but the difference between the West End now and what it was three years, ago, you know, whatever. But you know what the difference is? There's hardly any tourists around, and yet there's a few that coming back and here and there. But it's unfortunately screwed up a lot of the West End. So where they would fill out certain places before, they're not anymore. Mm -hmm. And that is a real problem. For Soho House, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Particularly. It's funny, when you get into a venue, it's another story, but you walk around the streets, they're like ghost town world. It doesn't feel like that. Yeah. You see them and you think, well, this should be three in the morning and it's half 11 at night. Yeah. And it, all the two, not that I care about tourists, but you don't realise how much of it they build up. And unfortunately, because of that, a lot of places have gone broke, like shops in Oxford Street, because yeah. they relied on tourists. Yeah. And, you know, Oxford Street is Soho as well, part of it. So I'm just saying, whatever, but, you know, you have to look at these things, and a year's time is another story. If there's no more, oh my God, there's another virus coming along, then hopefully, because people often plan their holidays a year ahead, six months ahead. They couldn't plan it eight months ago because they didn't know what was going to happen. But for next year, I think hopefully that will look positive for Sarah, unless we're at war with Russia, then hopefully that won't happen. But you know, if there isn't, then hopefully it will come right up and then they'll be back again unless they haven't got enough money to come in because people have lost so much money in the lockdown. I know not. I hope that we ever get to a point again where GAY is serving food. <laughs> I'll say that. Um, just, we're going to end in a second, but before we do, it's really important to talk about London Trans Pride, which happens in Soho and happens yeah. on the weekend, and which Lucia created, which is like, very <laughs> good. <laughs> 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 
the first year? Yeah, so it's crazy because it's only been going for four. Oh, sorry. Yes, it's only been going for four years, but it's kind of insane because because of the pandemic, because that completely changed the landscape of protests. So religion. So we started, you know, four years ago, and it was all there. Oh yeah, just let us know when you want to start a protest, and then the pandemic hit at the same time as the BLM movement. And then the gov when the government saw, you know, the BLM protests, they were like, oh my God, people are actually utilizing, you know, these yeah. these, these are protests that actually might create change. You know, we were all like throwing bricks at places, and we were like, okay, we're gonna use coronavirus to crack down on, on protests. And, all, and also the extinction rebellion protests as well, they caused quite a lot of chaos. So the government were like, we're gonna use coronavirus and pass this coronavirus bill that like bans protests, you know, makes it illegal. So they, yeah, exactly, because you know, we all have a right to fucking say, we're pissed, we're pissed off. So then we got to like 2020, and suddenly we went off into the, the police were trying to shut it down, and we were and suddenly becoming really anti police, you know, and it felt like really punk and really like fucking like illegal, like we did something really wrong, and now it's kind of going back, so it feels like it's been fucking chilly. But we went on Saturday, London Transparent on Saturday, and there was over 30,000 people.